Okay guys, I'm not even gonna lie to y'all. This has to be one of Apple's greatest accessories in recent memory, apart from maybe AirPods. This magic keyboard case for the iPad Pro line is impeccable with very minor flaws and truly revolutionizes what you can do with your iPad. In essence, it makes your iPad Pro into a computer, but I would still argue that I still prefer my MacBook Pro for Pro level applications like Final Cut. There are just instances where this keyboard and iPad combination makes sense, and other times it leaves you scratching your head wondering if a MacBook Air is a better choice. But today, we're going to take a really close look at this highly anticipated accessory Apple released into the wild and see what I think about it, as well as making your own decision on the whole, is an iPad a computer debate? You ready? Let's hop right in. So here's the thing. This unboxing is very straightforward. It's very simple and right to the point. We can obviously see our iconic white Apple box with an image of the keyboard on the front as well with Magic Keyboard branding. Our left and right sides are missing those coveted Apple logos as well as the top and bottom being completely blank. But on the back, we get some demonstrations on how the iPad Smart Keyboard folds. We do thankfully have a pull tab to assist in the unboxing, so sadly, my huge butcher knife that's off camera won't see any action, but that's okay. Once we remove the top portion, the first thing we see is our keyboard covered in this protective plastic. Remove the keyboard from the box to find a small hidden compartment of sorts that houses your warranty and information guide, as well as a pretty simple quick start guide on how to use the keyboard. But if you don't know how to use a keyboard in 2020, we might have some problems, I'm not even gonna lie. And that's it, folks that's all there is to this unbox okay so there's so much to talk about this case i don't even know where to start i think a great entry talking point is its price point because trust me apple must think we're gonna sign over our stimulus checks to them it's kind of weird because apple releases a super low cost phone with amazing specs and overall a great device for 400 and yet releases 700 mac pro wheels makes no sense but anyway the 11 inch keyboard will set you back a full 300 dollars don't let tim apple's 299 buffoonery fool you and the bigger keyboard for the gargantuan 12.9 inch pro has a sticker price of 350 dollars there's no haggling down the price either 350 a tidy sum for most i feel now that the se is out it's a great price reference so consider for 50 dollars more you get a fully functional iPhone with all the great benefits of a modern iPhone, only with a home button and age design. However, this is one of few Apple products that I will fully stand behind and say that the price tag is fully justified. But don't get me wrong, 200 and 250 would have been a more acceptable price tag, but hey, the Apple tax, man. Apple stays taxing, but let me give you some reasons as to why I feel this keyboard elevates the iPad into a completely new territory. For one, the engineering and design of this keyboard is a thing of beauty. The construction of the case is extremely solid. No one would ever say this case is flimsy or feels cheap. Just can't do it with this keyboard. Even when suspended in air, the keyboard hardly even flexes in case you want to go to iPhone 6 Bendgate style. It hardly budges but let's not even talk about bending because that's just silly who buys keyboards like these to see how easily they bend what people want to know is how the typing experience on it is and let me tell you it's amazing the keyboard uses the same scissor mechanism as does the new 16 inch pro and now the new macbook airs i can't tell if these are the exact same keys as the ones on the macbooks but at least the feel is certainly extremely similar you get the same feel as the Magic Keyboard with the same travel as well. Once all of this is over and Apple stores open up, do yourself a favor and try typing on this keyboard if they have it out for display. I never thought I would have the liberty of typing away as seamlessly and effortlessly on an iPad Pro just like how I do on my MacBook Pro. It provides pretty great stability thanks to the perfectly weighted and floating design that I'll discuss later on, but you will notice that we have no function keys. This is sort of a bummer since this is thank Thankfully, a backlit keyboard, which is super dope. Apple does have the smart keyboard folio, which I've reviewed for both the iPad Pros and even the 10.2 inch iPad. You should definitely click the cards on the top right to see those reviews. But I say it's a bummer because it's not as easy to dim the brightness on the keys. At first mention, this may seem nitpicky. Like Juan, does the backlight really bother you that much? Just leave it on, man. 
Uh, no. First of all, I paid way too much money for this keyboard, and two, battery, my guy, battery. No, I'm not talking about Metallica's battery. I'm talking about how this sucker drains battery off of the iPad Pro, bro. Just like how online classes suck the life out of you thanks to COVID. You see, the keyboard has no internal batteries that you can recharge or, God forbid, AA batteries that are required. Instead, the keyboard depends on the battery of the iPad itself, and while it doesn't go from 100 to 0 in 30 minutes, you can still tell that the keyboard on, especially with the backlight, will drain your iPad battery and per my usage, makes the battery last about 20 to 25% less than usual. Thankfully, Apple kinda sorta said, no worries brah, I got you, and included a pass-through USB Type-C connector on the side where the hinge is, that you can hook up to your power cable and not really worry about it. I don't know about you guys, but with my MacBooks and now with this iPad Pro setup, anytime I type and script, I always have my MacBook and now iPad hooked up to power so I can always see it at 100%. Am I weird for that? Does anyone else do that? So having that pass through connection is nice because you can lay it flat on your desk and type away with that cable being hooked up, providing unlimited battery to the iPad and ultimately the keyboard so long as you have it hooked up and charging. We now notice our smallest trackpad here at the bottom. You see, the iPad doesn't use a traditional desktop operating system since it's using iPad OS, which is basically a slightly more advanced form of iOS, so it isn't a fully fledged desktop like Mac OS. Not yet anyway. So the cursor ends up being this circle that helps you navigate around the iPad and open up applications and such. The trackpad is small, but it is very responsive, having this very clicky feel. Kind of reminds me of the pre-Retina MacBook Airs from a few years ago. And it's an actual physical click too, all around, even on the corners. It's really fun and intuitive to use, but at times, you are reminded that you're still on an iPad and not a MacBook or any other laptop for that matter. I'll be in an application and then get the cursor to the top left to see the red, yellow, and green circles that all Mac users are used to. If you know, you know. And I'm waiting to close out the app and then I'm reminded, oh, hold on dummy, you're not on a MacBook, this is an iPad. And honestly, that's simply beautiful to me because this iPad plus keyboard combination truly makes you feel like it's an entirely different beast. Not to mention that floating design. I mean, it just makes the whole setup look futuristic. Imagine pulling up on your professor and classmates once quarantine is over. Like, yeah, what's up? My iPad floats. What you got? Oh, a 2014 Air? Aw, can't relate. I mean, look at it. Look at how elegant this looks. What I love is just how secure these magnets are. I don't know what's stronger, the magnets found inside the iPad Magic Keyboard or that one strand of cloth holding your ripped skinny jeans together. The angle of articulation isn't anything extreme, but it does have a decent amount of angle choices in case you're a bit on the taller side or say you want to put it on your lap. Which leads me to my next point. With this setting out to be a laptop replacement, I know a lot of you will inevitably be on the go with this setup, and with that quick on the go action, you may eventually end up needing to type something on the fly. In some instances, you may want to lay your whole setup on your lap and type away, and it is doable, but trust me, it takes some adjusting. Reason being is that normally, if you take a look at your standard laptop, let's take a MacBook Air for example, most of the weight is where the keyboard is. Your main chassis is housed on the bottom portion, including your battery, fans, RAM, you know, all that good stuff, and then you have your lightweight screen, which doesn't account for much of the weight at all. But on the other hand, with this iPad setup, most of the weight is on the iPad itself, so Apple had to really make this keyboard a heavyweight in order to counterbalance the entire thing. It's really amazing how Apple engineers some of their products. The Pro XDR Display Stand, for example, which is stupid expensive for what seems like no reason whatsoever other than because Apple, but that stand is perfectly counterbalanced so that you can adjust the high with a single finger and it all feels so fluid and so natural. It's basically the same thing here. As a matter of fact, the iPad Pro 12.9 inch weighs in at about 1.4 pounds, while the keyboard surprisingly weighs in at 1.5 pounds, more than the actual iPad itself. So this combination does get quite heavy and adds a good amount of thickness to it overall. It's why Apple needed to make this case so heavy. So in order to compensate, they had to make this base really heavy. And it's not perfect, I mean it won't tip over on its own, but if you purposely add a small amount of force to it, then you will start to see some holes in the design, especially when having it on your lap. As you may have guessed, you get all the great benefits of an iPad case. I mean to me this is the best 
iPad computer setup. It near rivals MacBooks. You still have your microfiber material that protects the back of the iPads with that super nice and cold aluminum. The keyboard itself has that same silicone kind of material that's great for gripping and being on the go. The hinge is very well made where your pass through USB Type-C connection is and allows for a decent amount of angle articulation. And on the back you see your crease that allows you to angle your iPad and so that it has that elegant angled floating look to it. You have your camera cut out for your new square camera module that houses your LiDAR scanner and of course can't forget the apple logo come on you're paying 350 for this thing you got to have that apple logo to stunt man so would this replace my macbook not yet there are still small quirks here and there that apple has to fix for one lowering brightness is a huge chore for the keyboard you have to dig deep into the settings go to keyboard then hardware keyboard and then you can adjust the brightness to help on battery life then there's the whole no function keys and no escape keys either that is quite annoying so like if i'm ever binge watching on youtube and want to exit full screen mode i have to physically touch the screen and then there's the whole thing with the ipad itself not fully supporting creative applications like final cut or logic but these nitpicks are for my use cases and will vary from person to person but honestly this is as close as we're gonna get to a fully fledged laptop replacement the keys are tacton responsive with the scissor mechanism the trackpad is a little on the smaller side but it's intuitive nonetheless and a great addition to the whole setup and then the floating design man simply wonderful my thing is it is on the pricey side especially at 300 and 350 for both sizes being the 11 inch and 12.9 inch pros but if you can't afford it and you know for a fact you're not expecting your ipad pro to behave like a macbook pro with pro level applications you'll be happy you made the decision the construction is phenomenal and it's just so fun to use it's different and will definitely make you look like a boss but i know you guys will ultimately have questions like should i get a macbook air or this ipad with keyboard both are honestly nearing the same price point so i'll be making a future comparison videos like that and also the differences between the magic keyboard and the smart keyboard folio so ring that bell so that you don't miss out on any of the action that's been it for me guys but i can't wait to catch you all in my next video peace